Pork belly and pig skin are kind of the cheaper cuts of the hog, you know, they're kind of the throwaway parts. I am here in Columbus Circle. I'm going to the Mandarin Oriental of the Avery, which is a high-end cocktail lounge, and I'm gonna have exalted versions of these dishes. Avery is the cocktail-centric offshoot of Alinea. Alinea, I guess, would be, you know, Chef Grand Axe's hyper-modern, very technique-driven uh, restaurant. And then the aviary would be its counterpart, but the cocktail version. So the same sort of scientific, molecular stuff that's going on with food, you're applying to food, but also to cocktails. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of modern technique. So really breaking down classic techniques, analyzing the science behind it, and then sort of doing it in a more modern way. Exactly. So then tell me about the dish. This is a dish that captured my imagination without me even having tried it. The giant chicharron is something that is, the process is, is actually relatively simple. We take, again, the Berkshire pork belly skin, and we cook it for about four hours, just at a soft boil. Once it's removed from the water, we allow it to cool and we take any excess fat off of the actual skin itself. And then they're dehydrated overnight for about 12 hours. Once they come out of the dehydrator, we crisp them up at 375. So right then, you've basically expelled as much water as you can out of it. Exactly. And then it's just about crisping it up. And you obviously, you have to fry them in a fairly large... We fry them in a large pot, absolutely. They get quite large once they hit the oil. And it must be spectacular. Does it like blow up? Like They expand immediately. We season it after it comes out of the fryer. Red wine vinegar powder, white wine vinegar powder, and distilled uh, vinegar powder. There's a dip. Presumably that changes over time as well? Yeah, it depends on the flavor profile of what we're currently seasoning it with, but basically with this one we decided on a spicy corn, almost like a play on a hummus, so chips and hummus. So it's a spicy corn polenta with cilantro, Calabrian chili, and a little bit of lime zest as well. The pork belly is basically a riff off of a dish that was done at Alinea, and I fell in love with the dish. It's just something that stuck with me when I ate there. This is a riff off of an old classic. We're basically taking Berkshire pork belly and curing it. Well, that, that's almost like a, like a rub, like a dry rub. Exactly. That you'll cure it for, for how long? For eight hours. We then cut into the portions to fit inside our bags that we used to cook it at 85 degrees, and we cook it again for eight, eight and a half hours. In a, in a sous vide? In a sous vide bath. You wouldn't want to eat it in that way, right? Well, that's why we roast it afterwards. It gives it the caramelized flavor that you would associate with pork belly. So we then make our Thai banana curry. We use a little bit of little flowers to, to really make it look pretty. So that's really a lot of intricate work putting, it's like, it's, it's classic tweezer food, right? A lot, a lot of little tweezer work for sure. And then we put our Thai pork belly on top of that. And then- It's basically like a sandwich. It's like a sandwich or an iceberg uh, a lettuce wrap. It seems like a very classic Thai flavor profile. Is that what you're really going for? Absolutely, I mean, it, this, these are classic Southeast Asian flavors that we, you know, just taking them and making it, you know, an Alinea group version or aviary look to it. It sounds fantastic. I want to try that pork belly again, and I want to try the chicharroni for the first time. So I'm going to take a seat and look out on this glorious view, and then uh, hopefully you can uh, feed me. Absolutely. We'll cook some up for you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Did you hear that? I don't know if it's because we're like in the corner of the building, but literally that, like, that was like a shot heard around the dining room. I'm very sorry about that, folks. I'm just making my show here. Well, I'm gonna actually try this alone and then we'll go into the dip because, wow, you can smell the vinegar. It smells like an English chip shop. There's that hint of grease. You can tell it's fried. And then that salty, vinegary punch. Mm. Wow. I know I'm eating like a chicharroni, but it just feels like you're eating so much more of the pig. Like you're getting the essence of the animal. It's really, it's kind of revealing. It's weird in a way. So here is the polenta corn Calabrian chili cilantro dipping sauce. I'm gonna try to get a bit of everything on there. Mm, wow. It's a real flavor of maize, and that Calabrian chili is pretty spicy. I have to say, it's definitely giving it a kick. It's a wonderful juxtaposition. There's a slight grittiness there, but it's creamy. That flavor of maize and corn, 
perfect counterpoint to the crunch of this and the acidity from the vinegar. This is definitely the best chicharroni I've ever had. Probably the best chicharroni anyone's ever had. I have another fine example of pork on the table here, and let's go on to my old familiar friend. Look at this. Wow, it's crispy though, the crispy lettuce. Mmm, that is such a litany of flavors and textures that it's like hard to quantify, let alone recount. But yeah, it's really like, it's like a wild ride of flavor. It really does take you to so many places. It is a dish that is sort of, that sort of changes every bite you have because there's so many elements, so many components, and you'd think that that would be overwhelming, but here it isn't because there's such clarity to each ingredient and each ingredient is almost chosen to be calibrated so that it doesn't interfere with the other ones. It's absolutely superb layering of flavors. Maybe the best thing to say is that, like, this is worth coming down here for because it really is the most unique pork belly dish I've ever eaten. Incredibly complex dish, incredibly rewarding. Definitely recommended. So is this gorgeous chicharron. And let's not forget the view. I mean, look at that thing. It's just, you know, you're up here on the top of the world. So we'll see you on the next episode of The Meat Show. And I'm going to finish this pig. Wow, you could actually just like, just sort of dip it this way, really, if you wanted to. If you were feeling adventurous, right? Mmm. That's how you should eat it. It's more natural, right?